So this week on Penny Dreadful, we got death, violence, and even a ghost. That was pretty sick, right? <laughs> so another week gone by, a new episode of Penny Dreadful City of Angels to talk about. And this week's episode was titled Josephina and the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to get into spoilers in just a moment, but before I do, if you're new to the channel and you're interested in seeing my weekly breakdowns of episodes of Penny Dreadful City of Angels, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel. And as always, you can watch more videos right now. So getting into this week's episode, I'm going to go into the five highlights. Now, number five for me, now, I have constantly complained about there not being enough supernatural aspects in this show. And this week we did get a pretty cool scene with a ghost or some kind of apparition showing up and freaking these little kids out. But the scene that was my number five scene was not that scene, but was the scene at the beginning of the episode where we got to see another um, appearance of Santa Muerte. And... It was kind of unclear what was going on in this scene. I have a theory that it's, and I'm, this is pretty obvious, I don't think this is like a brilliant theory, but it seems like it's probably Maria, played by Adriana Barraza. It seems like it's probably her as a little girl because she has this connection to Santa Muerte that continues as an adult. And we've seen her praying to Santa Muerte for the return of her son, Raul. And this scene took place in Mexico, and it was not very clear what was going on, but we did get to see some gangster types shooting some other potentially gangster types. And I just thought the scene was interesting. And I always find, I found Santa Muerte to be extremely mysterious and intriguing so far. And I would love to learn more about her character. It's interesting because she's a goddess that is worshiped by a number of people. If you don't know the background of Santa Muerte, which I'm assuming a lot of you do, but if you don't know the background, I highly recommend you research it because it would add a lot to your understanding of this show. It certainly is added to mine. Um, my number four highlight of this episode was the scene between Tiago and Sister Molly. And I'm not really picking, there were two scenes technically speaking, but I view them kind of as a continuation of each other. And the first scene, Tiago confronts Sister Molly about the fact that she'd been having an affair with this person who vanished, Hazlitt, and was murdered. And it was an interesting scene because I think a lot of people have complained about the, or at least on this channel, have complained about the portrayal of religion in this show. And it turns out that Sister Molly, even though she's this religious leader, has gone out and had multiple affairs with members of her congregation. And you know, I think what this is trying to show is that it's a hard thing for a Christian to live up to their own standards at times. Like we like to pretend that we are perfect people. We like to pretend that we don't do things that are inconsistent with what we say we believe, but we often do. And that can come off as hypocrisy. And I didn't think that it came off as hypo hypocrisy with Sister Molly here. I felt like they were showing the challenges that she finds in trying to live up to people's standards as this person who's front and center, uh, as this pillar of the congregation. And I appreciated her acting in this scene. I thought Carrie Bechet is doing a really good job and I didn't expect to care that much about this relationship, but I am finding that I do. And I really liked the end of the episode where they were just washing dishes together. I felt like it was a nice callback to the second episode where they in, first encountered her and she was washing dishes. And it's Tiago quietly saying, you know what, I can accept who you are. I can accept that you're not this idol that I can worship. I can accept you as a human being and I can join you in washing dishes. So I really appreciated that scene. I thought it was quietly moving. My number three highlight is the scene with Dr. Peter Kraft, played by Rory Kinnear, and Elsa, which is another one of Magda's um, roles that she's playing as she, you know, makes her way quietly around the city trying to stir up strife and racial conflict. And 
You know, I think there was a brief appearance by Ethan Peck as a new character, Herman Ackerman. I'm still not sure why uh, Elsa is so interested in Dr. Peter Kraft because I feel like he, maybe I missed something and if I did, let me know in the comments, but it doesn't seem like he seems very important. Now, I know he has connections to the Nazis, so maybe that's all she's interested in is those connections, but so far I've been curious if he had some involvement perhaps with the atomic bomb and that's just something we haven't seen yet. It seems like he's a physician though, so I'm confused by that. But Dr. Peter Kraft finally succumbs to his carnal desires and they, you know, got got down and dirty. And of course, before that happened, though, we had a scene where Linda Kraft, played by Piper Parabo, who I haven't really seen a lot of her work. I've, I think I've seen her in The Prestige, and she provides a dozen, so a very prolific actress. Uh, but here, you know, she has one scene where she just basically tells Elsa that Dr. Kraft is not who you think he is. And that's intriguing. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. I felt like the point of Dr. Kraft was to show how a good person can be pushed to follow a bad cause, but maybe he's not a good person after all. We'll have to wait and see. I kind of like the idea of him better as a good person where, you know, you kind of see Elsa as the devil on his shoulder, which she's kind of a funny devil because you she's so angelic seeming, but she's very, very much, you know, the Aryan ideal, I think, is what they're going for, and her pushing him towards his hatred of the Jews and towards the embrace of Nazism. Number two highlight of the episode for me was the introduction of Benny Berman, played by Brad Garrett, who is kind of this Jewish mafiosa type, and I think he brings an interesting wrinkle to the story. We got to see Lewis push to the brink, and I thought this was well done because He's in this position where he's still upset by the death of his friends, but when given the opportunity to shoot one of the people responsible or one of the pe persons affiliated with those responsible, he chose not to. And I wasn't entirely sure he wouldn't do it, but Nathan Lane played this scene really well because you could see in his eyes that he was considering it, that he felt that it was something he could do and maybe would even be justified in doing, but he wouldn't cross that line. And I feel like they've done a good job so far of pushing both Tiago and Lewis up against their moral lines. And I appreciated the new character of Benny. I think that Brad Garrett has always been an underrated performer. And here he's just enjoying chewing the scenery. And obviously, I'm not sure what the level of contribution from him will be going forward, but he was... Uh, and a good ca side character this episode. They had another side character that was uh, this Jewish woman that Lewis was hanging out with, but I didn't find her particularly interesting just yet. This brings me to the number one highlight of the episode, which was juxtaposed quite well with Lewis's decision to not kill the man, which, you know, ended up the man died anyways because uh, Benny killed him. But it's the scene where at the end of the episode, we find out that the cop that has been in the show from the beginning, and I think the fact that he's been in the show from the beginning is part of what makes this scene so effective from a dramatic perspective, because he's just not some anonymous cop. Even though he's always been a bad guy, he's at least a, a bad guy that we've seen and we kind of understand how he justifies himself to himself. So when Mateo, played by Jonathan Nieves, kills him, and it was a really, really brutal scene that went on a long time, it wasn't just some anonymous cop getting killed, it was someone who we've seen, who has a face, who we understand the things that he's done. And it was well done, they walked a tightrope really well in that this scene, you feel the horror of it, and you know that you know this is really not gonna help things, and it's, I mean, you feel the sense of dread at what this is probably going to cause the police to do to the Chicano community, but you understand why Mateo has been driven to do it, and you understand why he's been driven to join the Pachucos. You've seen him push to this, and you understand. And I appreciated that they gave this second juxtaposition. Now, they clearly intercut this scene of Mateo going and killing this police officer with the scene of Lewis choosing to not kill the person who had perhaps had some culpability in the death of his Jewish friends. And they 
also juxtaposed this scene with a scene of earlier in the episode of the fact that uh, Mateo's sister, Josefina, whom the episode has been named after, had this scene with Sister Molly where you see her turning to religion after her experience because she's looking for the solace that religion can provide. And you see her just feeling so desperate because her family isn't paying attention to her and they're ignoring her pain. And even Matteo, who was there and witnessed it firsthand, is focused on his own anger and he's focused on getting revenge. And, it, you know, Maria, played by Adriana Barraza, is also, you know, ignoring her daughter and that... Josefina has to go to the religious community and not her own religious community, but this charismatic religious leader, uh, you know, to get comfort. And the way that Carrie Bechet played this scene, I thought the, the sympathy, the empathy you could see in her face that she showed towards Josefina in this circumstance, it just made me want to weep. And I thought it was really beautiful. And for me, that made that scene one of the highlights of the episode. And combined with the scene where Matteo, played by Jonathan Nieves, kills the police officer, I felt like this is going to be the most emotional scene for a lot of people. But let me know what scenes you thought were the highlights of the episode. If you had your own ranking of the scenes, let me know that. I'm going to be doing more episodes as they come out and reviewing them and reacting to them. So please consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see that. And as always, you can watch more videos right now.